Hey guys, I've been working on this video for a long time. Since the last trip I made up to Alabama, and I was quite frustrated trying out a couple navigation apps along the way. So I thought, man, you know what? I'm gonna find, or try to find, at least one awesome motorcycle navigation app. And that kind of morphed into, hey, why not do a big comparison video? So that's what we're here for. Now this is specifically about a motorcycle navigation app. Here is what I have gone through. Now I'm not gonna be detailing every one of these because frankly, many of them have deal breakers. According to my personal criteria for what I'm looking for in a motorcycle app, which are these simple things. First of all, basic navigation. I wanna be able to put in a place or an address quickly, easily, and have it give me a route there. It must have offline maps. Here in mid-2017, as of the time of this video, that is simply a basic feature. Just a few years ago, that may have been an oddity, but no more. There's no excuse for any kind of navigation app eating up your data plan or requiring, more importantly on a motorcycle, access to cell data. There are many awesome motorcycle roads, especially up in the mountains, with no cell phone coverage. So you must have offline maps to be in my book of a great motorcycle navigation app. The whole thing, or at least all the basic features, must be free. There are a ton of programs out there right now that are free. There's no longer the need to spend 50 or 100 bucks on a navigation app like there was several years ago. I purchased one, um, geez, I don't know, seven, eight years ago now, and I've been using it ever since. They don't even make it anymore, but I love it. And that's the original TomTom. Tom. It doesn't do a lot of things I'm looking for for this video, but for general navigation, it was awesome, but it was 50 bucks. There's just no need to do that anymore. I'm looking for some intelligent rerouting. One of the things that really pissed me off about Google Maps on my last trip was it completely changing my pre-planned route without telling me. And I ended up wasting a lot of time before I realized that the route had changed simply because I had gone off to get some gas and it, it just decided to completely change where I wanted to go. It has to be very easy to navigate via touch gloves. This is for use on a motorcycle as you're going down the road. So if the screen doesn't have very intuitive, easy to use controls, that's a no-go. It must have turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Not necessarily with voice, although that's a nice extra to some people. I don't personally use the voice option, even on the navigation apps that I do use with turn-by-turn, -turn, but it must be able to tell you you have something coming up. And more importantly, I want all the information. Some of the basic ones will simply tell you right-hand turn coming up. Some will say right-hand turn coming up two miles. The best ones will say, right-hand turn coming up two miles, exit 36, Baker Street. That's what I'm looking for. I like to know what I'm going to. I don't wanna to have to constantly visually check back, oh, how close am I now? How close am I now? And then as I'm getting to the street, especially if it's residential or a lot of streets all in one area, I'm constantly making sure I didn't skip it because it doesn't tell me what street I'm looking for. That's a basic to me. Now here's the biggie that knocks a lot of them completely out. It has to be able to accept custom routes that you've created yourself, either via another app or on Google My Maps or whatever, to be able to import that via a KML file or a KMZ file or whatever means the app supports, it must be able to bring in a custom route because there are tons of great custom routes for motorcycles that you want to be able to have it navigate. And that's the other part to that. I don't want to just see it. I want it to be able to navigate that custom route with the turn-by-turn -turn navigation. That knocks even more of them out. So I'm going to run through everything on the list. And for those that pass muster, I'm going to look into more detail. And then I'll give you some comparisons. Will we find one do-it-all? I don't know. We may have to maybe use two apps to get everything we want. I don't know if even here in 2017, there's going to be one 
that does everything for motorcyclists. Let's check it out. So starting off with the elephant in the room, Google Maps. Obviously, this is one of the most robust navigation systems on the planet. Very well updated, a great interface, very powerful, and at first glance, it looks like it would be a great motorcycle app. The problem is, even though you can import a custom route and it's extremely easy, probably the easiest to actually create a custom route using Google My Maps on a regular computer, it goes right into your account, but it doesn't navigate. All you can do with a standard imported route is look at it. Absolutely useless. Along with the recalculation bug that I absolutely hate. It's not a bug, it's, it's a feature to them. <laughs> uh, this knocks it out of the running for a motorcycle navigation app to me. But as a general navigation app, at least if you can deal with it not sticking to your route, it works very well. Now part of this I do like is that, say I want to go to Ikea in Tampa. It does give you the options of different routes from wherever you are. And this is really nice. Oh, they put ads in it now, that's new. Haven't seen that before. No, I don't want Uber. <laughs> so here we can see it suggests this first route. And I know there are several different ways, all within a few minutes of each other, to actually get here. And it shows this one is two minutes slower, that one's three minutes slower. This one it initially selected is taking a toll road. Now, I don't want to do a toll road, and when I'm on a motorcycle, I also don't want to do gravel roads. Sometimes I want to avoid freeways, so it's nice to have extra options when refining your route. What Google gives you is notifications here. It says the route has tolls, and it gives you the turn-by-turn. -turn. We can click on each of the other routes to see its detailed information. But what we can't do is select anything like curvy roads, motorcycle-centric roads. Then once you actually start the navigation, it does give you all the information that I like. It gives you distance, what you're doing, and the name of the next road. And it also has free voice turn-by-turn. -turn. So it is fairly robust. This is maps.me, and it's a very basic navigation app. This is very quickly off the radar because it has absolutely nothing to do with custom routes. Really, it's a bare bones, it's like a stripped down Google Maps. I really don't know why anyone would want to use this. So we'll go back to Ikea. And it's thinking, it does have offline maps and it shows that it wants me to go across Hillsborough Avenue. I have no way of doing anything with alternates or selecting what types of roads. That's it. It's extremely basic. So this has the usual 2 or 3D navigation, but absolutely no information about what your next road is or your next exit or anything like that. So very, very basic. It has turn by turn, but not voice. This is Sigic, and right away it's prompting you to buy a whole bunch of stuff. It does give you the basic features for free. And just a note, if you install this the very first time, you can't exit out of these buy now screens. You have to force close the program and come back in just to see the not now button. So again, it's fairly basic. Let's go back to Ikea. And this one at least will give us some options. We can add it to a favorites list. I like favorites lists. It's very handy, especially when you're going to the same place frequently or obviously from a different starting point. I like it to navigate back to home. So now this gives us the option of the fastest route or an alternate. Here we can choose route options. And it allows us to turn on or off freeways. Does not have an option here for the toll roads or anything else. I have a suspicion those are only the premium features. But obviously unpaved roads I would always want to turn off. Usually toll roads I avoid. 
So not fully featured. Does have traffic. That's nice though. Let's go ahead and start that route. We can report things that we see along the way. Real-time navigation is kind of an augmented reality thing. That's an optional premium feature. We can turn it into a dash cam or heads-up display to show our speedo if you have your phone mounted on the dashboard of your car. And that is about it. This does show the turn and the street name, so that's good. And we have a display of the four most closest gas stations. This has no way of importing a custom route, however. So that's out. This is Copilot. Now there are two versions. There's a free version called Copilot GPS, and it gives you seven days free trial of the full version, which is just called Copilot. Now at first glance, even though this one is, uh, it's under 15 bucks, it's on sale at the moment, so it's showing 12. So it's not terribly expensive, and at first glance on paper, it looks awesome. You've got all the standard features, you've got turn by turn, you've got all the normal options, and it has built-in route planning. However, it does not have a couple very important things. Number one, everything really cool is optional extra. The, the basic Copilot GPS doesn't even have turn by turn navigation, doesn't have custom routes or anything like that. The routing inside it, you can create your own custom route inside the app. However, you can't just plot the course on a map. You can't just look at the roads and go here and there. You have to have a destination and then add waypoints manually one by one. To do it externally, you can use Google My Maps, but there is no direct way to import them in. So unfortunately, it's kind of landlocked. Now there is a workaround See, and even on the free trial here, it makes you buy the feature to even import a saved trip. There is a workaround if you're on Android to manually convert the My Maps file and then manually get the file into your Android phone file system. I absolutely guarantee you most people will not be able to do that. It's just not something simple for most users. For iOS, you have to use a third-party program again just to even be able to get the file onto the phone because Apple does not give you the ability to copy files into its file system. So very, very clunky. Gonna pass on this one. This is MapQuest and you know what? As a general navigation app, I actually like it and some people are going to really like it for general use. It's got a couple drawbacks however, but going through it, very easy to navigate, exceptional interface. We have lots of different driving options. You can choose multiple routes. It tells you the traffic conditions for free. Tells you if they involve toll roads, which you can turn off. You can choose whatever you want just by clicking these options. And then once you start it, you have turn-by-turn -turn navigation, including voice, including the street name, and it's fully customizable. Now, two deal breakers. Number one, it's not offline. It is absolutely completely useless offline. Can't even look anything up. Everything requires internet access. And number two, no custom routing. So that's out. This is Apple Maps, and it's basically a less featured MapQuest. Almost identical interface with the same drawbacks. It's not offline and no custom routes. It does have some options for choosing a route. It gives you different touch options for three and it does give you the options of turning off toll roads and highways, but that's it. No traffic, no waypoints, nothing special. And then once you get into the navigation, Head east on Botway Drive, then turn right onto Bluebird Drive. Turn by turn and voices, and it looks fine. But again, not offline, no custom routes, out of the running. 
This one's called GPS Nav, and it's interesting. You can tell it's in development. There are a few rough edges, but it's got some promise. It is offline. It doesn't have custom route, so it's not in the running, but I want to show you it anyway because you might be interested in it if you don't need custom routes because it's actually pretty darn cool as a general nav device. The interface is a bit clunky. You have to go through a lot of different menus to get to different things. The settings are way down here, so you've got click and scroll anytime you have to get to the settings. But there are some pretty cool things. You can choose if you're in your car or your bike and set different presets for what types of routes that you want. For example, in a car, I usually like the fastest or the most efficient, but when I'm on the bike, maybe I'm just out for a ride. And you can choose most tranquil, and that means back roads. It's really cool. You can avoid toll roads, highways, ferries, and all that kind of stuff. It has turn by turn with voice and street names. So let's go ahead and try to navigate here. Now the offline is just for the map itself. You cannot then try to search for something else if you are offline. Should be obvious, but you never know. So we'll do a local search and we'll look for Ikea. That is not it. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Let's try expanding it to 20 miles. Came up before. That's weird. So now we've got the result here. You don't really know what to do until you expand this. You can start or end the route there. I don't know why you would want to start the route where you're searching for. Take me there is kind of the shortcut to just start navigating. If we choose the route there, it defaults to whatever your default in the setting is. So this is the quote, most tranquil. And it is a lot of back roads. It is way out of the way, let me tell you what. But I do know that these roads are darn good for a motorcycle, so that's really cool. The only problem is it's a lot of stoplights. Up in these sections, it's all country. Down here, it's all urban. So that would be a very long route, and they're showing nearly four hours for 49 miles. I absolutely believe that. <laughs> so it's not a motorcycle-centric most tranquil. Some other apps will show curvy roads, meaning motorcycle-type roads, but that doesn't mean a stoplight or a stop sign every 150 feet, which this is. So to actually start navigating, you have to press the little button down here. These are tiny. I can barely hit one with a bare finger with a glove. These would be an absolute nightmare. Let me rotate it so I, you can see it there. So there you go. I mean, absolutely tiny, tiny little buttons. Not good for being on the road. And once you get in, you would think that would start navigating, but no, it brings you to really what the screen should have been before. And this is showing you three different routes. So it gives you your time frames. There's a four and a half hour route, which goes down through three counties. <laughs> and then you can switch between your car default they show a bicycle for your motorcycle. I guess they just differentiate between two and four wheels. So then you can see the actual different routes. Uh, it doesn't tell you on this screen if it involves toll roads or not. You just have to remember which you had selected in your preferences. So you can go into actually start the navigation and it gives you turn by turn with voice. And it is a basic interface. You do have options for turning it to 2 and 3D. Uh, pretty much all of them have that. And you can get into the basic settings here for the map display while you're navigating. And that's really about it. But no custom maps, so it's out of the running. This is NavMe USA, and this is more of a social media type thing. It's kind of a cross between ways where they want you to share a bunch of stuff and a video game, really. They give you rewards. It's just kind of weird. It does have offline. It does not have custom routes. The actual navigation is pretty basic. So we'll search for Ikea. It doesn't even give you the city of what your results are. So it's showing me all these different Ikeas and it, it's not too useful. I ended up clicking on the wrong one the first time. I know that's the right one now, and it's not very intuitive. We'll click the little drive icon. It shows us route options. It does give us toll warning. It does have the options to avoid them or avoid unpaved roads and things like that, but nothing motorcycle-centric, nothing about curvy roads. 
and that's about it. So you share your trip now every single time you do it. It does have traffic, and one nitpick about this app, it defaults to using your GPS even while the app is closed because it wants to share all the free traffic data with everybody else, and it sucks your battery dry. A few of these have done that. So if you install any of these apps, make sure you go into your settings, into your location services, and make sure it's only while the app is running, unless for some reason you do want it to be sharing all the time. I certainly don't. It will cook your battery. So we have basic options in here. It has a built-in MP3 player. Kind of outdated there. And that's really about it. This is Verizon Navigator. And frankly, this is an example of an app that doesn't need to exist. Ten years ago, it might have been exciting, but it is frankly just not in competition with other stuff. Number one, the free version only gives you written route instructions. You don't even get basic navigation unless you subscribe to it. Other than that, there's really nothing special about it. There's no offline, there are no custom routes, and it's not especially fast. <laughs> well, there you go. Can't connect to the Verizon servers. Try again later. Okay, deleting. This is Reaver. Now, up until this point, the apps have been pretty good at general navigation, but severely lacking on anything really motorcycle-specific or custom routing. This is exactly the opposite. This is not a general navigation app, so it doesn't do you any good trying to find where you are or going to Ikea or anything like that. But it is absolutely comprehensive for all the well-known and locally shared motorcycle routes. Now, it's not free. <laughs> the cheapest option is 60 bucks a year to get you some of the maps. And then there's a lot of other different things you can subscribe to. All these types of maps here will load in different routes. And you can preview what's in your area. Unfortunately, in my area, absolutely nothing is available. So it's really only going to do you any good if you happen to live or are going around a lot of really popular motorcycle routes, like up in the mountains. But basically, I'm 100 miles away from anything on the radar. Doesn't really do me much good. And you can't import your own route. You can share stuff with other people. It's got some social media stuff, uh, but that is about it. You can't use my maps, for example, and pull in your own ride. What it is good for is tracking a ride that you actually go on and then you can make a route from that. But you can't just go to a map and create your own route. And it's got these challenges and points and you know, pretty much the millennial kind of app thing with a lot of rewards and things like that. So very specialized, definitely not an all-encompassing navigation app. This is Here We Go. And again, it is a very nice general navigation app. It does have offline. It does not, as is the case in most of these, have custom routes. So let's see what it's got. Going back to Ikea. And the reason I'm using this is because there are several very distinct routes to take, different types of roads, and it's really good for showing these options very quickly. So. It shows where it is, we'll get directions, and it does give a lot of different options. It's ad sponsored, there's ads in a ton of these screens, so you can just ignore them, but that's how this one makes its money. This will show you the different routes, but it doesn't really give you too many details. You have to know if the road is a toll or not. I know that Veterans Expressway is a toll. Here you have more options for what you can turn off, so we'll turn off unpaved and tolls. It does have options for public transportation. There isn't any in my neck of the woods here anyway. You can turn on or off the options to switch between all the other types of transportation. This is a all-encompassing transport app, not just navigation. But we can customize it to now basically just show cars and we have no routes available using the preferences. Interesting. <laughs> Well, I know there are. Okay, so this is showing 
a really roundabout way. This is the first app that's shown this way going down 75. That is not by any stretch of the imagination the best way of getting there. It's better to come straight down 275, but okay, we'll roll with it just to show the app here. And you start your navigation. It doesn't show how far you have until the next turn. I don't like that. It just shows the upcoming street name. So definitely not in the running. There are much more robust free navigation apps for sure. This is called Scenic and it is so far a front runner in my test. This does have very motorcycle specific features. It is free. However, there are some optional things that you can buy. The whole thing runs on a credit system. So when you install it, you get a certain number of credits and you can spend it however you like inside the app. I chose to download some maps. It does have offline capabilities. You can pay to turn on things like voice navigation. It does have turn by turn built in for free. It does have custom routes and it does work with Google My Maps. So far, it's looking darn near perfect. So we have settings here for a lot of very nice things for motorcycles. We can select a curvy routing setting for our preset. Really good for motorcycle, motorcycle centric roads for sure. All the normal navigation stuff. We have this fine scenic routes. And what we can do is zoom out to where we would like to ride anywhere around us. And anyone that has shared routes in your area, they will show up and you can use them. And there are quite a lot around me here. Too big, a little too greedy. <laughs> so that's definitely cool to check out. And this is all free again. We can also put in favorite routes. We can create one from scratch on the screen, but it's much, much easier to go on your computer and use Google My Maps, believe me. And then we can do an import. And it takes a varying amount of ways to import directly into the app. I use the Google Maps from desktop. There's a little video that shows you what you need to do. You can email yourself files. You can use these services here to directly import it in. It's quite easy to use. We can save our favorite locations. We can import locations, again, using the same services. If we hold down the route button, it'll take us to our saved favorites. This is one that I created. I called it the Green Swamp Tour. You can rate it, you can share it publicly, and then you can navigate it. It'll pull the route file in, and down here we have even more options. We can avoid tolls, avoid highways. We can select our curvy setting if we want to use that. Obviously, if you're following a route, you don't need to do any of that, but this will get you to the start of your route. It is very handy. One little weird thing here is if you select fast, short, or efficient, it will hold your options here. For example, I always want to avoid toll roads. So I can switch back and forth between fast, short, and efficient, no problem. But if I hit curvy, it's a bug. It will deselect it. So be aware of that. If you go to curvy, make sure you click back on avoid tolls if that's what you want. So all we have to do is start trip. Now here's where another credit feature comes in. You can choose to just click continue without voice and you get turn by turn navigation. If you, for whatever reason, want it to call out the street names and your turns ahead and stuff like that, not everybody wants that. Then you can either subscribe. It's only 10 50 a year. That's super cheap. 50 bucks a lifetime. Although I do have to caution you against doing that. I've been burned before where apps disappear long before I would have gotten my value. <laughs> so you might want to consider the per year. Or you can pay as you go and use up one credit. You get 25 credits when you install it. Each map you download, depending on the size of it, takes a few credits. And then I think I have 21 or 20, something like that left. I have 21 left. So I could click this and this very one time that I run this, it's not good for every time you run the route, just for this one time I'm hitting navigate, it'll use one of my credits. But I don't want voice anyway. And there you go. 
Now you've got your normal options here. You can turn it 2D, 3D, rotate, all that kind of good stuff is here. It shows all the information I like. Distance to the next thing, what I'm doing and the name of it. ETA, time left, distance left, your current speed. It gives speed warnings. This is really nice. So we're gonna save this one, and actually go out on the road later and see how it is actually using it on the bike. This is an app called InRoute, and you'll soon see that it's quite limited. Okay, basically, it's just for general navigation. So we'll put in IKEA. We wanna search the map. Finds IKEA, shows the information, so that's good. Shows us a route. We can set what we just searched for as the start, a waypoint, or the destination. We want the destination. It does give us more info. And that is about it. This does not show any alternates for this. It has the functionality for alternates, if any are available in its database, but this is only showing me one route. So we'll hit go and oh, it's just a teaser. You have to buy the system to actually use it. <laughs> and you can't uh, import anything. So nope, no thanks. This is round and this is kind of another one of those specialized route sharing apps where people have driven roads and they can share them with other people. And it's pretty pointless in my opinion. Uh, it shows nobody using it basically in my area. So it doesn't do me any good here. There is not much to even search for because it's only looking for addresses. It's kind of all about the social media aspect it wants you to log in and share stuff, and it's just kind of pointless. Nope. Here we have Rider, and increasingly these new types of apps that are coming out, they're, I don't know, I'm calling them millennial apps. They're all about dopamine receptors, man. Rewards for doing everything, and points, and participation trophies for just using the app. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And a lot of them are requiring logins. Most of them tied to Facebook. I know that's going to kill it for a lot of people. Some of them will allow you to use the app at least as a guest, but some don't. The other major issue with that is when they do require it to even work, number one, it's not offline, but number two, even if it is online, I have a lot of trouble sometimes connecting to their servers because they're down. And I'm having that problem right now. I got in earlier, but I've run into this before. See, there you go, server connection failed. Well, you know what? That means an absolutely unusable app to me because this does me no good in the middle of a trip if I absolutely need it. Fail. Here we have two apps that are virtually identical. These are rebranded software called Rider X, and many corporations will take these and just slap their basically splash screen on it. That's really the only difference here between the Indian motorcycle app and the Victory motorcycle app. They both do the exact same thing. Both are pretty much useless and not too many people are using them. So again, this one wants you to log in. It's all about the rewards and the sharing, all that kind of crap. However, it does give you down here in the corner, continue as a guest without a login. And it is really hard to touch it even with a finger. So gloves, no thank you. Definitely not made to be used on the road. And they go through this, I haven't uh, disabled the tutorial yet. So it gives you uh, obviously a basic map, but it's not about general navigation. You can't search for Ikea. You can basically share your rides as they call it, or routes with other people. And that's really about it. It's just getting out there and pressing record, making your ride. Here you can see all the other rides that their users have shared and it's really not that many.
clustered here very well in the mountains where you would expect it. Down in my area, somebody thought, oh, just riding straight across the bridge there, that's, that's a great ride. Wow, that's, that's helpful. You know, basically none of the good roads are covered. <laughs> so that kind of tells you something. And that's really about it. You can't import, it's not offline, no general navigation. This is a useless app to me. This is Pocket Earth, the pro version. I did buy this app. I've had it for a couple of years. I bought it for a trip that I went on with some other guys and they had created routes in here and we were all following the same ones. So we all use the same software. This can be a very useful app with some huge caveats. I'll spoil it right off the bat. It is not a great all-in-one motorcycle navigation app, but some of you may find this interesting so i'm going to detail it for you anyway it is fully offline you do have to buy the pro version to get any of the advanced features i mean basically the free version is a teaser with a big upgrade button so it's a one-time 10 to 20 buck purchase depending on if it's on sale or not if it's going to be useful to you it's worth it so you get offline maps and the cool thing is you can pick and choose what you want to download so you don't have to take up a ton of space. That's the only drawback to my regular TomTom app that I use for my general navigation. It's a 1.8 gigabyte app because it's down, it's offline, but it's the entire country. So it's just huge. I mean, the maps, the waypoints, or not the waypoints, the point of interest, everything is in there. This allows you to just narrow it down. You can go down to a city, a region, a state, whatever you want to do. So it does give you the option to tailor it to your device. So that's cool. And they are very detailed maps. It does not, however, give you the ability to import a custom route. What happens if you try to do so is it, it puts it into this, what they call track. You can create your own route in the app and it, if you get it in there, works very well, gives you the turn by turn navigation as you would expect. Problem is it's a pain in the butt to do it. You're zooming in, you're dropping pins. So we'll create a new route here just to show you the basics of how to do it. We're gonna pick a starting location. You can go from your favorites, which are just pins you've already dropped. Um, we'll say just current location. Okay, now we're gonna add a destination. The other thing is, if you're doing complex routes, say, say you want to do pretty much a loop, well, you're going to be dropping a lot of waypoints because it'll want to automatically go to the shortest distance. So we will select an item on the map and we're going to end, say, down here. Now you do have to be pretty precise. I meant to hit the main road here and it actually put it on this San Jose loop, which I don't even know where it is, but it's not on the main road. So you got to zoom in when you do this and actually go to, see now it's on Seven Springs Road. Okay, hitting the plus works. <laughs> and see now it just gives you the basic shortest distance. And you can hit nav and it'll give you the nice route. You can then save that, but it, like I said, it's a pain in the butt. For example, if you do that on Google My Maps, it's dragging and dropping like a rubber band and actual pins. It is so easy to create any kind of custom route you want. The problem is getting it into here, it doesn't come in as a navigatable route. It brings it in as what they call a track, which is just a picture of it. And you have to be looking at the map, no turn by turn directions, nothing really useful. So, and you can't turn a track into a route. The only way you can share a navigatable route is exporting it from here as a proprietary file into another Pocket Earth Pro. So even importing a GPX file only comes in as a track. So you just see this as a picture, you have no turn navigations. So not really useful there. But for those of you that wanna take the time and create your custom routes in here and drop a lot of waypoints, this can be a good option because it is very handy to have all of this offline. Now, general navigation, little quirky. Let me, it's also a little quirky to navigate all these screens because it's just not intuitive. Okay, so 
Say we want to find Ikea. You would think that you would just go up to search everything and put in Ikea. No. <laughs> in fact, it doesn't do you any good. What you have to do is go to... i got to remember where to find it because, like I said, this is not intuitive at all. Nearby. Again, you would think that search nearby points of interest. It's going to include everything on this list. So we'll search for Ikea. No, hmm. that's very interesting. I know it exists. You have to drill down and we'll collect, we'll select shopping and then search Ikea. Oh, look at that. Now it finds it. That's ridiculous. It, it's got bugs. The company admits they're a two man operation and it's a foreign company. It's just not polished. Let me put it that way. So now that we found our destination, we can either create a track or a route. I have no idea why you would want to create a track to go anywhere, but it gives you the option. You can save it as a favorite. Say you want to go to that destination a lot. So we'll create a route. We can either add it to the current one. Say you're in the middle of a trip and you want to you know, go to a store for something. You can do that. You can route to or set your starting. We'll go to it. Gives you absolutely no options for alternate routes. It just basically selects the fastest one. And in this case, it's taking me down a toll road. There are no options for any other types of routes. And that's it. So very basic and really not useful as a general navigation app. But I did want to show it to you because like I said, it's very specialized and some people might have a use for it. This is Waze. And I hate all these pop-ups that come up. This has already asked me twice. No, I don't want Waze to be tracking my fitness. So Waze is a very popular, again, millennial type app. Tons of logins and sharing and points and rewards and blah, 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 blah. It's young friendly. Let me put it that way. Good morning. I'm surprised there's not an anime girl coming up and clapping saying, good job, you launched the app, yay. So tap to start driving. Okay, as you can tell, I'm not that impressed by it. <laughs> Number one, uh, no custom routes. Number two, wants you to log into everything. I'm using it as a guest, so it does at least have that option. Uh, yes, you can speak into it, wonderful. I have already searched for Ikea. So it's just in there as a recent. It does have very good turn-by-turn -turn navigation. We can add waypoints to it. We can see alternatives. It does give a list. It does warn you if there is a toll road involved. And switching over to the map, we do have the nice selection here. It does have options for turning off unpaved roads, avoid freeways, we can avoid the toll roads. So that's all very good. As a general navigation app, quite good and very popular. This is one a lot of people are using. Now another very popular feature about Waze is the fact that you can tag things like accidents or where speed traps are and things like that. So we'll start the route and it starts going. We do have our ETA, we have our mileage left, what we're doing next, the street name and it does speak it so that ticks all the boxes except for the custom routes and it being offline <laughs> like i said anything that requires all this kind of login and sharing they're never offline that's not what they're about so i'll pass this is scout maps and it's one i'm not even going to look at this one not only requires you to log in but it requires your phone number it wants your phone number and it will text you a code to even launch the app. I'm sorry, but no, Mr. Anonymous Company for a GPS nap, you're not getting my phone number. I don't need to be added to any more lists. That's all there is to it. Complete fail. This is the only one that requires this. There's no reason to install it, period. This is Magic Earth and it's another decent, basic navigation app. No custom routes. It does give you the option to be offline. However, I can't tell if it's going to be able to search things on the map or 
if you go into a new area, get the map data, all it gives you is the option of mobile data on or off. And I think that's only these options here, seeing the terrain and satellite view, the map data, and the traffic, which is real-time info. I don't believe these maps are actually offline. So uh, there's also no custom routes available, but as a general nav app, we have all the usual stuff. I do like when they have a point of interest button. It makes it very easy to search for fuel, food, that type of thing, rather than having to search for a name or hope that searching like gas stations will do anything. Sometimes they don't. So we'll search for Ikea and it is finding bus routes. <laughs> I guess that's interesting. And, but down here, it tells me Ikea, but it doesn't list the city. Kind of does the Google Earth view thing. I much prefer it just to be instant. No one needs to see animations when they're trying to look something up to go there, especially if they're driving. Okay, so now it's calculating. It shows us three available routes. By default, it will automatically start your route. So if you're in the car... You may not be looking at this, and you can turn the feature off. I did for this video, but that was quite annoying. So now we see the first route here, which is taking the toll road, and I do not see a warning about it being a toll road, so you'd have to go into the settings and disable that purposely. But I don't like depending on that, because sometimes I do like to take the toll roads. For example, this bridge down here, the Skyway Bridge is a toll road, and this is a normal way to get south. So I don't want to turn off toll roads because then it routes me all the way inland if I want to go somewhere. So you end up having to toggle it on and off if it only depends on that. I much rather prefer it to say here, this has a toll road, so I can just skip it. So we will skip it, and we'll go to this one here. And we can start. There are no motorcycle-specific options in here about curvy roads or anything like that. And it does give you the street name, what you're doing, where it's going, your speedo. And you can toggle between them. Speedo, miles left, or both. Okay, so that's what I would want, is everything on. Again, basic, definitely better options out there. No reason to use anything quirky. This is Navi Rider. And once again, a total millennial dopamine app. It wants you to log in and make your profile. It tracks points for doing anything. And it's pretty useless. It's not a general navigation app. What it is is ride your bike, record a route, share it with other people. Oh, it's got leaderboards. Wow, that's exciting. Look at these guys who have racked up all those points for doing things. They're super special. <laughs> So yeah, uh, the actual app itself, how do we get to it? I don't want leaderboards, I want the map. Let's go to Ikea. So now we can route to it. And we have no options. It just wants us to go across the Courtney Campbell, and that's it. Don't like it? Tough. Very basic. Other than that, it's about, like I said, sharing your routes. We'll delete this. We'll see if there's anything near me. All routes within 100 miles. Nothing. Okay. It's a real popular app. 500 miles. Hey, here we go. South Carolina. Yeah, out of state. Three whole routes within 500 miles. So there you go. Absolutely no reason to use this piece of crap. So like I said, this one is definitely the front runner. It's the closest to being perfect. It's not perfect. It's got a couple small glitches here. So I want to, it's a little awkward here just because of the camera angle. Normally it's much easier for me to reach. Okay, now I want to import a route and I have gone ahead and bought this for a year. And one thing to note is, even if you buy the premium, it doesn't give you all the maps. You can download about a quarter of the country, the U.S., for free. Beyond that, you have to buy credit. It's about 20 bucks if you want to buy the whole country 
so it's really not that big of a deal. And because I'm premium, it doesn't ask me if I want to spend a credit. Normally the importing each time is one credit. So I've made a little route here. It's just Patterson and Boy Scout Road, our local little fun twisties down the street. And we are going to go to it. And now it's looked at the file, and we can save it if we want to, or we can edit it in the app. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Do we want to make it public? Sure. Why not? It's a cool little route. So now it saves it as its internal file. I don't want to rate it right now. And now we can go to our saved routes, my routes, and navigate it. Takes us to the start of it, and then we should be able to just start the route. Okay, let's go. So I want to see what this does for redirection. I'm going to go straight through the light. It wants me to turn left, which is the correct way to go. I want to see if it just creates its own route. I'm going to go down to the next light, where it would actually have the opportunity to create a different way to get there, or if it just wants me to backtrack and get back on plan. And it is telling me to get back on plan. That is exactly what I wanted. Google Maps would just sit there and go, eh, you know what, here's a completely different route and I'm not even going to tell you. So it's telling me to come in here and make a U-turn and go back. So that's cool. And I'll flip around right here. Now you can see it's telling me we're going to make a right-hand turn onto County Road 77, Seven Springs Boulevard in 1.2 miles. And it does have voice navigation. I just have it turned off right now. That is part of the premium for 11 bucks, 10 something a year. I didn't buy the lifetime. Like I said, been burned on that. I have no problem spending, what is that, about 80 cents a month. I'll definitely get some use out of this. If nothing else, just for enjoying... Oh, I just noticed the camera bouncing around down there. I've got the uh, another GoPro staring at the phone there so you guys can see it. I apologize for that. It's just catching a lot of wind. Oh well, it's better than you trying to see the phone from this camera because you can't. <laughs> so I'll get down to the actual route and when we're on it, I'll do the same thing. I'll veer off at a couple roads and see what happens there. And I will talk about its one major downfall and why you're going to want another GPS app. Just Google Maps or Apple Maps will do just fine. Nothing fancy is needed to supplement this to really make it the perfect combo. Now we're actually starting the route. That intersection is the start point. And these are just our fun little local twisties. They're short, they're nothing special, nothing like mountain roads, but this is the best we've got. <laughs> so I'm not complaining. And obviously very popular with all kinds of motorcyclists and cars, but usually motorcyclists. So I'm going to get down halfway through it here to the next major road and I'll go the other way. 
and I want to see what happens there. Now, when it happened to me on Google Maps, just going at one intersection, turning into a gas station, it rerouted me down that other major road and just took a totally different direction to my routed destination. It was not holding the pre-planned route. I think this will do it based on that previous test. Aw, oh, dude, really? You're going to do 10 under and be a Sunday driver on a Tuesday. Caught up to the parade. <laughs> All right, so the loop continues to the left. I'm going to go right. We'll go down the roadways and give it some time to think, see what happens. Hopefully it's going to, at least for a while, tell me to turn my butt around, get back on course. And it's telling me 0.7 miles. I can't see if it's telling me to do a U-turn or get on another road yet. See if I can zoom it out here real quick. It says off route, navigating back. Okay, perfect. So it is trying to safely put me back on track. That's what I wanted. That is awesome. Okay, so we've confirmed that it operates exactly the way I want it to, and really I think all of route following navigation programs should. Now I'm going to show you why this is not an all-encompassing app. If you've been on a trip, you more than likely have had this happen. You're going through your trip and, oh boy, I am getting light on fuel. I have no idea where I am. <laughs> Let's find a gas station. Now, with my original TomTom Tom app, which again, you can't get, so I'm not even going to bother showing it, Okay, so there it's telling me to do the U-turn. That's cool. So I will actually go in here to show you what I'm talking about. With the original TomTom Tom app, and of course it being an almost two gig download, it has points of interest and stores and shopping, all that kind of good stuff in its database. Anything you want that pretty much exists until very recently, it's in there. So it finds it. And you just tell it, hey, find gas stations near me, right? Real simple, exactly the way it should be. This has none of that. <laughs> Frankly, it's it, it sucks. This is great for your route and going to a certain place, but finding things around you, it it doesn't have the functionality. Nothing. You can search, and it, it'll do a rudimentary Google search. For for example, you know, see if I if I even go out of this to try to find gas, it's going to make me do the whole route again. But trust me, you just search for gas, and it doesn't even bring back a normal Google search. So, you do have to supplement this with Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever else you want, even just regular a browser, or an offline GPS app that has points of interest in it. So, you need something. It depends on if you need offline or not functionality. That's what it comes down to. But other than that, man, this thing is slick, well worth the money, and I'm not affiliated with any of these. These are all just my personal opinion based on use and what I know to be important in these apps. So there you go, guys. Hope this video helps somebody. I realize it was very long, but I really couldn't have gotten through it any shorter because there's just stuff that needs to be said. And there are a lot of apps on the market. I also realize there are many other solutions. There are even more apps than that, but frankly, I don't think this list leaves out anything important. The big elephant in the room is, this is about apps. This is not standalone GPS devices. I am well aware that certain third-party dedicated devices, like Garmin's, are exceptional and do probably most, if not all, of what I'm talking about already. But those are several hundred dollars. They have to mount to your bike. They're big. You have to worry about what you're going to do with it when you leave your bike. It's not your phone where you just put it in your pocket and you're done. 
That's what I like. I, I have no interest in a big third party GPS, a dedicated GPS. I just think that's way too outdated for 2017. The apps are enough to do it for me. I don't mind using two GPS apps to cover everything I need. So that's it. Hope this helps somebody. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Share it with your buddies. Share it online, Facebook, forums, whatever you're in. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe to see more and we'll see you next time.